I want to share my experience evaluating the new UBA version, I believe it is 3.10. Yep, that's the one. You know, in the documentation, it has a lot of use cases. But let me actually show you what I saw. First thing, when we look at any user, let's take a look at uh, Sophie here. You probably have seen and enjoyed this uh, timeline, which is uh, so very useful. But in the past, the timeline, the, the items that you could see here, reuse use cases, aliases, were fixed. Not anymore. Now you can click on this gear and notice that you can, let's say that I'm not interested on destination port. So I click here, but I want uh, events. I don't know. And there are, you know, a bunch of categories that you can choose from here, and then do save. And uh, for me as a user, what I get is, you know, those events there. And of course, you can always click on any one of those, and you can see all those events. And if I want to see, for example, the ones on cloud, I can click further down and see them here. I can always see those in Curator as well. Again, so lots of flexibility on the on that uh, timeline. More goodies. Let's go into the admin tab and see the configuration options for UBA. And we'll see that uh, there's one that I probably is not new, but I never focused on it before. Where is UBA? Here, uh, this is advisor. Here is UBA settings. This uh, content pack, for those advanced users who prefer to use the capabilities of UBA, but without their rules and, you know, custom properties and references and all the stuff that the product automatically comes from, you can actually uncheck that box and then you will be your very own set of rules for UBA. This is kind of a uh, kind of cool and and I'll show you also well action I can even go here and uh, show you that uh, in the when I installed the UBA I noticed or and when I updated the, the UBA package I noticed that it added all these different content pieces. So this speeds up the uh, the migration or the installation of uh, UBA as, as these packages are added individually. So it's kind of a good thing. So actually go back to the settings because there are more things that you might be interested. This one is actually pretty cool. So risk threshold. This is the way that we have been using this. For example, I, I look in my organization and, you know, I can decide that, you know, a threshold of uh, in this particular case, 100,000 risk point is when I want offenses to be fired. Now you have an option here of doing this dynamically. Okay? And when a user, you know, deviates more than four units of standard deviation, then that is considered a, a threshold that has been reached. So you don't have to wait for UBA to work for a month to see what the risk level is. You can actually have this been computed dynamically and it's actually nicer because as the situation changes on your environment it will be automatically reflected in here. Here's a button in which uh, by default comes on but if you are getting too many especially when you are tuning UBA and you're getting too many offenses you can uncheck that button and have that uh, been uh, disabled. Now let me actually go back into the UBA and to this view that I love, the rules and tunings rule, which is great. You know, uh, UBA has uh, right now, we can see 139 rules. That's a lot of rules. And I noticed some nice additions in here. For example, there's a cloud category now. And there are, at least this is starting with two rules. Notice that they are disabled by default. This one requires a reference set. You've seen me talking about this in other videos of UBA. Very nice. 
uh, there's also a domain and I'm going to check this one and go to there's a new section for domain controller which you know there are more rules and reference sets that need to be uh, configured for those. For example, in my demo system, I have a domain controller uh, admin. So that that's a that's a uh, a, a new category that you can sort things by. Now there is also. I had mentioned this before, but I think it might not be too redundant to do it right now. Let me go into my rules and I added the other day a rule for a lab that I was doing on the Learning Academy and I made a separate video out of it and I you know created a rule that actually contributes to UBA. It is this one. It's actually edit that offense. This has nothing to do with UBA right other than it's using a reference set here but, but you see that this is a, 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 a like this doesn't comes in the system by default this is something created and I'm going to give you some example well, in fact customers are using like let's say that you are in a bank and you want to follow some particular risky transactions you can add an offense that works on that credit card you know swift locks uh, let's say that you work in a you want to monitor the traffic on a on, on inventory on a on a warehouse. Well, you can you can monitor on uh, package coming in, coming out, smart meters. I mean, the different rules that you might be setting up depending on your particular environment. But the important part is that if you dispatch a new event and you put this parameter here, sense value equals. In my case, is sixty, and then you put the actual high level category has to be this one sense and in the low level category you can select from any one of these depending on what's the use case that you are doing every time this offense fires is going to assign 60 point of risk to whoever was the user involved in this uh, particular uh, case which i think it is uh, something that if you are not doing it i encourage you to make UBA more tuned to your specific environment by simply dispatching that additional event.